Hi, I'm Kurt Vinson. Welcome to the Saturday Show. My guest this week is William Fint. He's the president of Bladen Community College. William, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. Um, there's a, a lot of exciting things going on out at, B, at BCC, and uh, one of those is a new building that just recently opened. Can you tell us about that? Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and glad to be here and talk a little bit about the college because I, I had, as you can tell by my hair, long experience. Uh, and it has been community college work since the 70s when I worked at Sampson Community College and have continued to that work and I'm glad to be back in Eastern North Carolina. Uh, we are pleased to have our Student Resource Center, we call it. It is a library, but it's more than that as you see or as you know, uh, things progress and we have a lot more in it than just books. We have media material, we have classrooms in it, we have computers in it. So it really is a resource for students in many respects. We also have an area as you come in that is devoted to uh, people who can relax, come in and have coffee if they want to in that area, uh, enjoy the surroundings and relax somewhat. Uh, it is a, a $3.4 million building, so it um, certainly was funded well, and it is the last building the college has done with the 2000 bond. So this money, the trustees uh, devoted something that they thought was important to the campus. Our previous library was small. Uh, this is large in that it is uh, 16,000 square feet. So um, we have a person, Sherwin Rice, who is the director, who has long experience, has a master's in library science, who really has devoted her life to uh, learning and books and media. And we, it's a wonderful resource. And we find lots of students use it, particularly because of the computers that we have in it. Uh, we were just talking about that a little bit, a bit a few minutes ago about how times change. And um, I've come from when I remember that seemed that long ago when you didn't have any computers to now we have oh five or six hundred computers right. on campus. All of our faculty have computers. We just opened in the old space that was the library, a smaller space, a tutorial lab with fifty computers in it so that students have the opportunity to come and work on their own, uh, make up assignments, do work uh, on campus, and receive tutorial work at the same time. And, and people in the community certainly can't miss this new facility. It's, it's right out there in front, kind of the centerpiece, right on, on Highway 41, easy to see. It is. Our trustees wanted to make a statement and wanted to have something that was visible, and I think they did a good job uh, with the planning for it. It is a community resource. I want to make that point. It is open to anyone who wants to come and use it. It is uh, one that we hope others will come and use our resources. Uh, I'm sure Rice, as I said, and the librarians there, I think have done a nice job uh, securing books and things that anybody would want. And we have a wonderful children's section because we do have a child care program at the college. And actually that's one of our largest programs. So we have an extensive collection of children's books. So I hope uh, parents, if they uh, don't have access to many books, will come and check them out. That's great. Now something else that's been going on at BCC recently, um, for the last year or more, um, is the enrollment. Uh, and you all have been setting some records. Well, we have, and, and that is a trend in community colleges in the state. Uh, Kurt, there's 58 community colleges. All of us are up in enrollment. Uh, Bladen has had extensive enrollment increases since I've been here in August of 2008. And, of course, part of it, I think, is the economy. Uh, people are very concerned about what they know and uh, what they can learn and what the future will hold. And so i found many students come back to um, gain new skills that they'd like to have or they see they may want a new program of study and they'll come uh, to the college for that. So when I came we had uh, around 1,400 students each semester. We're now up to 1,800 students in the past three years. This is my third year. Our enrollment increase has been 30 percent. Uh, this last year was 10 percent increase. The year before that was 20 percent increase. So we're maintaining that uh, level of interest and enrollment in the college. It certainly has stretched our budgets and stretched our faculty, where uh, faculty were oftentimes teaching classes, which you'd like to have, of 12, 15 students. Now oftentimes have students of 30 and 40. So, um, uh, and I'd have to say our faculty have stepped up to that. Uh, the faculty I've seen since I've been here are very interested in student learning as a group 
and really want to help people succeed. So that's, to me, that's what community colleges are in this college. Blaine Community College is certainly an example of that today. So you mentioned the uh, kind of the stretching your resources a little bit. That's the challenging side of, of the increased enrollment. Uh, but it's also a good thing, I would think. Uh, it, is, it is a good thing uh, because we feel like we are accomplishing what our mission is. Uh, the community college mission that Bladen has as well as the state community college system is to prepare people to work. And I certainly think with the programs that we have, that we emphasize here at Bladen, we do that. We do have a good number of technical vocational programs that prepare people to work. Our allied health programs, our nurse assistant programs, our ADN programs are um, ones that attract a good number of students. Uh, I mentioned our child care program has a large number of students. Our general education program has our largest number of students. People preparing for some aspect to continue to work. Okay. Um, now the region has heard a lot about BRAC uh, in the past year or so. And I know Bladen County is part of, uh, or is one of, uh, 11 counties in the region that will be affected uh, by BRAC. Uh, what will BCC's role be uh, when BRAC be, really begins? Which is soon, as you know, uh, with large numbers of people coming in. We're fortunate, of course, to have Ron Taylor from this county who heads that now. So we've worked closely with the group and with Ron Taylor to make sure that we're prepared. And I think. Uh, in my mind at least, what the emphasis for this county is to help people, at least for the community college, to be able to work in the uh, industries that are coming, in the programs that are coming to this area as a result of the increase uh, in the troops that come here, in the military that move here. Uh, as you know, we are on a fringe, I would say, the northern part of the county or the western part of the county may receive some uh, increase in people and businesses. Uh, and certainly it's going, it's Fort Bragg is on uh, the western side of Cumberland County, Hope County. They are really ramping up, so, you know, new hospital being proposed for Hope County. Um, but we're, we stand ready and we work with our school system here to make sure that students are prepared and able to work in those aspects, those companies that do come to this area. Okay. Now we're sure that there's, um, in addition to everything that is going on, there's other things that are probably in the pipeline that uh, down the road that students and, and the community can expect to see at BCC. Do you have any way that you can tell us about some of those things? Well, we talked about that a little bit as we got started, and um, I would have to say our budget restrictions are such, as I mentioned that with our increase that we have with faculty teaching and overloads, some of our faculty teach significant overloads of courses that we already have. So expanding programs or adding programs is not something that we have had the time to manage and look forward to. Uh, we're trying to maintain what we have. Uh, Kurt, we have uh, been notified, as, as you report, uh, the governor's asked for a significant decrease in funding for next year to meet uh, the state's deficit. The community college system as a whole will be reduced a little over $100 million. Uh, at a time when all of us experienced significant increases. So um, the idea of expanding programs is not one that uh, we are doing too much with. We do, however, look for this community and what we can do, and there's been an interest with our airport here, which is uh, in, in very good shape, uh, and our, our town manager and the county officials will want to make sure that we can expand that and, and have that grow. So, the college has looked into um, adding to our welding program, which is one that is a strong program at the college with large numbers of students, primarily because students in welding can get jobs. They are very successful getting jobs. To adding to that a fabrication program that would benefit um, this area in that we could prepare students to be able to work on airplanes and the manufacturing of planes uh, in, uh, in this area. So that's one that we've looked at, um, but as far as new programs, we've looked more to add courses that we have. I think that was the question we talked about, something we talked about, of what do we add. We can continue to add sections to meet the needs, but adding new programs uh, is very expensive to do when you think of the equipment that you need, hiring faculty and so on. Uh, we've been able to add faculty to 
because we've grown, we've been able to add faculty, which is what an emphasis that I have put on is making sure that we have faculty to meet the needs that we have, which we think will continue even as our budget's reduced. Right. So um, uh, Blade Community College's budget, if we reduce 10%, we would certainly look to reduce uh, part-time instructors, look to reduce in the areas of supplies and travel. We've stopped almost all travel unless it's directly related to instruction or necessary even now. Uh, it's, that will continue to next right. year. And I was handed a note before we got started. Um, it said something about composite materials. Um, what is that? Uh, how does that relate to BCC? Um, I'm not sure. I really don't have an answer to that. We haven't looked at that. I guess would be the best way I'd say okay. that. Okay. But it's not something that we have looked for. We looked into. Okay. Well, it does seem to be quite a bit going on out there, and it seems like the uh, the successes keep coming, which which we hope will continue, and uh, hopefully the budget cuts won't slash into things that are going on out there too too badly, um, and hopefully things will turn around uh, quick enough so that uh, that that won't uh, that won't really hurt hurt anything in the future. Well, I certainly think things are, as you know, are beginning to improve, and we expect that to be true uh, in the future. But we do want to work with the state as we do face uh, several billion dollars of, of needed reductions so we can uh, keep our budgets balanced. That's uh, what certainly what the college does is to use what we have judiciously and use it well. We put our emphasis on people and I think in the end that will pay off. All right. Well, William, thank you for joining us. I yes, appreciate sir. the continued success out there at BCC. Good uh, to I know see the community you. really needs to have that college there and, and growing. So. Uh, Anyway, thank you for all for joining us on Saturday show. You all have a good week.